Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Are you woke up this morning? I said, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And may we give all of our time and attention unto it. Well, friends, today is January the 12th in the year of our Lord, 2017, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust that you are feeling happy in Jesus this morning, that there is a song upon your heart as you cast your mind and your attention upon the things of God and away from this world. Well, we're continuing our study in the book of Romans, and actually today is going to be our final time in the book of Romans. We are next going to take a look at the book of Ephesians. But for now, I want to pick up in Romans chapter 15, and Paul basically is closing his letter. So if you were to read chapter 15 and chapter 16, you will see that Paul is basically giving his last salutations to his readers, and he's telling them that he wants them to salute those who are in Christ, and there are many names that he mentions. And so there are many young believers that he wants to pass his love on to. And so when he says to salute them, he's basically saying, give them a hug and a kiss for me. Let them know that I love them, that they're in my prayers, and that I care for them deeply. And he's hoping to see them soon, but because he's constantly in prison, he's constantly being intimidated by the Roman soldiers and the Jewish religious leaders, he honestly doesn't know if he'll ever have an opportunity to see them again. So he closes his letter with much love and tenderness. But in chapter 15, verse 1, he kind of is going to finalize what he already told us in chapter 14. And so he says, I want you that are strong to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please yourselves. Now, just keep that in your mind for a moment. Not to please yourself. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to his edification. In other words, a lot of times when we approach someone or when we're involved in conversation with someone, we have our own motivations. We're trying to reach them with a specific truth. And yet Paul is saying in a very subtle way, put your own motivations in the back seat. Listen to the person. Meet them where they are. Don't be so concerned about bringing them to where you are, but meet them where they are. Listen to them and then respond accordingly. He says, even Christ pleased not himself. Now, I want to spend a few moments on this because when it says, now, even Christ pleased not himself, in keeping to the context that we are to please others and not ourselves, we have to look at the life of Jesus. I mean, imagine for a moment, Jesus was the perfect representation of truth. Jesus said that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. And aside from himself, that is true. But Jesus was much wiser than Solomon, much more knowledgeable than Solomon, because Jesus was pre-incarnate truth. Now, just think about that for a moment. When we read the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the first couple of chapters of the book of Acts, Jesus could have passed on much truth to his disciples. And yet when we read what it was that he had to say to them, it was the simplest of truth. He never spoke of anything that was what we would call deep, but everything he had to say could be understood by a child. And yet how often do we, in our conversations with others, try to pass on the wisdom that God has given to us that we have learned through our journey, and we get frustrated because we feel like it's going in one ear and out the other. And it is. 
because they're not in a place in their journey to accept what it is that we are telling them. Now, friends, there are many times in our lessons together where I am passing on truth to you, but today I'm preaching to myself because I cannot tell you how many relationships that have been lost, how many conversations have been left empty because I'm trying to get the person to see what it is that I'm trying to pass on to them. And yet what I should have done is taken Paul's advice here and met the person on their level, listened to them, and spoke to them as very simply as possible about the simple truths of God. Because that's where most people are. And what has taken us years of experience, pain and suffering, mistakes and failures to learn, we're trying to dump on someone in a five or 10 minute conversation. And so there's no way that they can understand what it is that we're trying to tell them. And so in their minds, we're coming at them from left field and we absolutely lose any personal contact, any opportunity of ministry that we have with them. And so I want to look again at what Paul says here. He says, we that are strong, let's just say we that are wise, we that have learned much in our journeys ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. We should meet them where they are. We should meet them on their level. We shouldn't be like a high school student trying to take a first grader and teach him all the things that we have learned through 11 years of going to school. We're going to lose that first grader. Instead, what we have to do is we have to become a first grader and speak to him on a first grade level. Does that make sense? And so Paul says, when we find ourselves trying to persuade someone, when we try to bring them to where we are rather than meet them where they are, we are pleasing ourselves. Now, I'm not going to say all the time because I know in my case, all the time, it's not necessarily that I'm trying to show someone how much it is that I know or how much it is that I've learned, but I value what I've learned. I value what I know to such a degree that I know that that's what they need, but I can't expect them to get that because just as I had to take it one step at a time, so must they. And so I must go to where they are and teach them what each individual step is to potentially and inevitably arrive where I am. And that's why Paul says in verse two, let everyone please his neighbor. Let everyone seek to understand his neighbor, to learn where his neighbor is in his journey and then speak to him for his good, to his edification, to building him up from where he is to where he should be. And this requires much love and much patience. And maybe that's why the Bible tells us, speaking of Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 27, when he says, he that hath knowledge spareth his words. Boy, I wish I could learn that sometimes because there have been so many opportunities where I have had to be a blessing to someone, but I've turned them off simply by attempting to pass on wisdom and things that I have learned that they are not ready for. And so Solomon says, he that hath knowledge spares his words and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. In other words, a wise man keepeth his mouth shutteth. (laughs) That's what the Bible is communicating to us here. And it's a hard lesson to learn. Because again, we know the value of the wisdom that God has passed on to us And we want others to know the same truth. But if they're not ready for the truth or the meat that we're trying to give them and they're babes in Christ, only ready for milk, 
They're going to choke on what it is we're telling them. And that's what Paul is trying to communicate. So he says, put others before yourself. Think about them, where they are. And don't think about yourself or seek to please yourself by educating others when they're only going to learn here a little, there a little, step by step, truth upon truth, precept upon precept. And if that's true, then we have to meet them where they are, as I've stated. And I don't mean to reiterate that so much, but it's such an important truth. Then where they are, we reaffirm what it is that they already know, what they already believe. And then one small step at a time, we impart truth to them so that it doesn't overload them or become a burden unto them. Well, as I stated, Paul is going to close his letter with these salutations. But in chapter 16, verse 17, he says, Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they are not serving the living Jesus Christ, but they are serving their own belly or their own appetites, their own desires. And with good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. And so Paul is basically saying, I I don't know where each of you are in your personal journey. I don't know where you are in your understanding of scripture or in your understanding of the Lord Jesus and his teachings. And because I'm not there, All I can do is write in this letter that I want you to be very careful what you listen to because those who twist truth, manipulate scripture, and teach falsely are very good at what they do. And if you're not truly grounded in what it is that you know and what it is you believe and why you believe it, you will be misled by these wolves in sheep's clothing. And it truly is, friend, of utmost importance that we understand why we believe what we believe. And as we approach the scriptures, we read the scriptures, we must question everything that we believe and then allow the scriptures, the word of God, to conform our reasoning, to conform our beliefs to what the Bible teaches. And that's a very uncomfortable experience, but it is a necessity as we walk and we grow in our journey with the Lord Jesus. Well, we're going to close there today, friends, and I truly trust that this study in the book of Romans has been fruitful to you and beneficial to your walk with the Lord. And I trust that the many things that we have learned, you will apply to your life daily so that it will be said of you on that great day when you stand before King Jesus, thou good and faithful servant. As I stated, the next time we're together, we'll be in the book of Ephesians. And so if you want to go ahead and read that, it's only six chapters. I would highly encourage you to do so. Familiarize yourself with it and prepare your heart for the things we're going to learn. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so honored that you are again with us in these studies. I truly love and appreciate each one of you. And I just want you to know that you are a true encouragement and blessing in my life. Now, as our Father wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.